Okay, so welcome back. Uh, the second part of the tutorial will walk you through how to conduct a phylogenetic analysis uh, using the joint programs Beauty and Beast, and we'll also be using the program Fig Tree in order to visualize our results. Uh, so what we have here is um, the alignment that I conducted in Mega with a few of uh, my original sequences with uh, alongside a bunch of published sequences that I pulled from NCBI. And so I'm interested in running a phylogeny of these sequences to see where my original sequences uh, fall on this tree. And so what you'll need to do first is you'll need to export this data in a way, uh, in a format that is understandable to downstream uh, programs. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to data at the top, we're going to export the alignment as a Nexus file. And so you want to save that in uh, the, the folder that is appropriate for you. Uh, name it something um, informative. So I'm going to say tree three um, alignment. And I'm going to hit save. OK, so once you hit save, you can navigate to the next program which you can see here. So this is the graphical user interface for the program Beauty. You'll open Beauty first. Um, and what you will want to do is here, you will go to File, Import Data, and you will navigate your folders and select the Nexus file that you just created from Mega. And so I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, and I'll pull up the data. OK, so I've pulled up my Nexus file. You can see the file name here. And I'll go through how you set this up. There is also a tutorial that Beast and Beauty, uh, the programmers, have made for the use of this program. And so I'll link that down in the description as well. So, so from here, I typically skip the first few tabs. Uh, what I'm really interested in is making sure that my nucleotide substitution model is correct. Uh, so the default is the HKY model, uh, which I will leave as is. You can change the base frequencies, the height, uh, the site heterogeneity model. And you can also decide whether you want to partition off into codons, particularly if you want to exclude any of them. Uh, so I'm not actually changing anything here. I'm going to leave this as the default settings. Uh, I'm also going to leave it as the default uh, clock type, but there are uh, various options that you can select from. Under the tree, there are several different tree priors that you can select from. And so I will uh, look at the, yeah, the Yule process, uh, the speciation Yule process. Um, and they very uh, kindly provide you the citation right below um, for you to, to cite in your, in your papers. Um, I'm going to indeed have a random starting tree um, be that is the default. You can adjust the states if you'd like. You can also adjust the priors if you'd like. Uh, I am keeping everything as default as possible. Uh, but of course, depending on your statistical needs, uh, you can adjust anything that you want. And so, yep, I'm still just keeping these uh, separate. The file name stem that you have here, uh, I always rename as uh, the program that it will be going to. So this file that is generated here will be for Beast. Um, I just find that easiest to keep track of when I'm going through my folders. OK, and so this is all fine. These are the files that will be output. You can go down to the bottom here when you're done uh, setting all of your uh, settings, and you can hit Generate Beast File. Continue, uh, and then you save your file where you'd like. OK, so uh, I will save this file, and we will move to the next program. OK, so the next program is going to be Beast. So you can see here, this is the Bayesian Evolutionary Analysis Sampling Trees. That's what Beast stands for. Uh, for the Beast XML file, that is the file that you just created from Beauty. And so you'll choose File, and you'll select the file uh, that you just created. So I will do that here. 
and right, this is for beast. So again, that's just the easiest way for me to keep track of what these files are. Uh, the random starting, uh, the random number seed uh, can, can stay uh, and everything should be loaded. Um, when you download beast, all of the necessary components should download as well. So you can just hit run and you can see uh, that this is how the program runs. And so this may take a few minutes. So I will let this run and I will be back when the output is ready. Okay, so the analysis just finished running. Uh, you can see that when it gives you an output uh, down here. Uh, and so once this is done, it automatically generates the files for you and saves them into the folder uh, where the rest of your files are. So we can move to the next program. So the next program is going to be called tree annotator. So this is still in the same um, family of programs as uh, Beauty and Beast. So tree annotator is by the same company. It's made to be run. Uh, with these files. And so this is what the screen looks like when it opens. So we are going to specify uh, a standard amount of burn-in states for this program is 100,000. So that is what I am going to do, but you can of course adjust that uh, based on your uh, own statistical needs. You can also uh, specify the posterior probability limit, the target tree type, um, I would like to uh, land on a maximum clade credibility tree, so I will leave that as is. For the input tree file, you're going to choose a file. Uh, the one with the dot trees is the one for uh, the tree annotator. The output file is not a file that exists. Um, it is a file that you need to name. Once that's all ready, you can hit run and I will see if you can see this. Uh, this is indicating that the program is running. It is calculating what the maximum clade credibility tree will be, uh, which will help. Yes, okay. So you can see that this is finished and you can quit the program to exit. So once you are done with that, we can move on to the next uh, program. Okay, so this is going to be the final program that we use. Uh, this is a program called FigTree. So this is also free. This uh, functions really well with output files from Beast. Uh, and so what we are going to do is we are going to input our, uh, our tree that we just created into this uh, program. And so this is not meant to be a full tutorial on how to use fig tree. Um, I'm sure there are tutorials out there that are going to be much more in depth than what I'm going to show you here. Uh, the purpose of this is really just to get you um, familiar with how this uh, program works and some of the basic things that you can do with it and that you're likely to do with it if you are creating a phylogenetic tree. Okay, so what we'll first do is we'll go up to the top, we'll hit file open, and we are going to uh, select our file that was just created from the tree annotator. Uh, that is going to be our tree topology that you can see here. And so this looks pretty bad, as you can see. Um, I inputted a ton of uh, sequence files, so a lot of this is going to be collapsed, um, edited. Uh, as far as the names, I'm not going to leave, you know, the ascension you know, just the, the Ascension file name um, as is. I'm going to rename things to be a bit more pretty. So um, yeah, so what you can do, the very basic thing that you can do is uh, what you just saw me do, is you can zoom in or zoom out on your tree. You can expand your tree to give yourself a bit more space to work with. You can make it a fisheye view. Um, I am certain there are functions for this. I never use this. <laughs> uh, you can also adjust the root length and the curvature of the um, of the actual branches. So you can adjust that to look the way that you'd like it to look. 
So uh, there are also various views that you can take. So you can do a free form tree, as you can see here. You can also do a circular tree. Uh, I personally uh, favor just the basic um, directional phyl uh, phylogram that you see here. So what we're going to do is you can, uh, under appearance, I'm just going to talk through some of the various things that you can do and that I commonly use. So under appearance, you can adjust the line weight. So you can make the lines thicker or thinner. Um, usually about a line weight of two or three, I find looks the best when exported. Uh, and so the next thing that you can do uh, under trees, um, typically I leave this alone. You can adjust the time scale if you have created a timed tree. Uh, you can adjust the scaling factor. I'm also going to leave that alone. The tip labels, you can choose what you want to display. So you can display uh, the rate. You can display the, um, the length of the branch. I always uh, keep the names and you can adjust those later and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, the one thing I always do adjust in this field, though, is the font size. So I always make the font size, uh, at least a font size of 10, just so I can see it. And I'll expand the tree so we can read a little bit clearer. OK. Um, so the next thing that I do, you can also adjust the tip shapes if you'd or so. Sorry, I didn't click on it. The tip shapes. So you can see how these uh, little circles came here. Uh, you can make them rectangles, you can make them diamonds. Uh, I typically don't have any tip shapes. So you can see that selecting this box adds them or takes them away. You can also do that with the node label. So I typically, uh, for the node labels, I uh, select that they appear, I make them readable, and I export uh, just a basic tree uh, once everything is cleaned, of course, I export a tree with the node labels on it, and I export another tree with the node labels not on it. Because usually what I do is I go in in Illustrator or another uh, image manipulation program, and I add the nodes back in, uh, just because you can't necessarily adjust where these node uh, labels occur in fig tree. And so I typically, you know, they can overlay on some of the tip labels. So I always just kind of go in and do that manually. It just uh, is easier to control for, for me. Um, you can also adjust the significant, uh, the significant digits of the node labels. Uh, I usually just keep it at a significant figure of two. Okay. Uh, the node shapes. You can also adjust. So again, you can see uh, no, no node shapes, yes node shapes. You can make them circles, rectangles, or diamonds. Again, you can also um, adjust the sizes as well. But I don't usually have those. I usually don't do anything with the node bars. Uh, you can also select branch labels. So if you select that, uh, you can choose from a variety of different data to have displayed here. So I typically uh, have the branch lengths displayed. Again, you can adjust the font size. And what I use this for is this is a way to calculate the actual distance between taxa on the tree. Uh, this is less useful in a... Um, in a Bayesian tree, because the Bayesian tree does not correlate with the number of substitutions in between taxa. Uh, but if you were to input a maximum likelihood tree, then the looking at the branch lengths would be informative in that respect. And so I'm going to actually take those away for now, just because we don't need them. The scale bar is going to be at the bottom here. Uh, and you can adjust how that looks. So you can adjust the font size. You can also adjust the uh, line width. If you deselect automatic scale, you can specify what you want the scale to be, what you would like displayed. Uh, so I'm actually just going to take that away for now just to clean up the view. 
You can also input a scale axis, particularly if you have created a timed tree. This is really useful. So you can see exactly where each node falls along the scale axis. You can also add a legend, but I never do. Uh, so I'm just going to leave that deselected as well. So one of the functions in fig tree that is really useful is being able to rename your taxa. So you can click anywhere on the tree. You can select, this selects a node. You can see that this is the mode that it's in. Uh, you can also select clades, uh, including individual clades, uh, as well as the taxa. So if you select uh, the taxa, what you can do is you can annotate uh, this particular taxon. So for instance, if I want to name, rename uh, this branch of the tree uh, Pravana Shinkai, you can uh, annotate that. So you can hit OK and it replaces, that data is not lost, but it replaces uh, the pre-made, you know, the pre-input uh, label with one of your own. So if you were to select this again, and you hit annotate with leaving while leaving this blank and you hit OK, it reverts back to the original. So that data is still stored in the branch. Uh, you can also do this with collapsed clades. So uh, you can select the clade. If you hit collapse over here, uh, this collapses those two taxa into, you know, um, just a representation of the genetic distance here. And if you hit annotate, you can type in the name and you can see that here. So if you go through each of these clades, you can collapse, you can rename uh, as many different things as you'd like. Uh, another function that is available to you in FigTree is the ability to rotate the nodes. So if you use the node selection and you use this rotate function up here, you can rotate uh, how taxa appear on the tree. Okay, so you can select really anything and rotate it. So you have a lot of freedom there. Uh, you can also select what you'd like the root of the tree to be. So if, for instance, I want this to be, you know, the rooted taxon, you can hit reroot and that will pull it out as the out group um, and the rest of your tree will follow. And so this is just an example. I wouldn't actually reroot it on this, uh, on this taxon, but uh, that is what you can do when you are in fig tree. Once you have your tree looking uh, workable in a way that you uh, deem appropriate, you can go up to the top, you can hit file, and you can export your tree in a number of different ways. So you can export it as a PDF, a PNG, JPEG, uh, whatever format is most useful for you. And then it is will be ready for you for future manipulation. Okay, so again, this is not a full fig tree demonstration. There are probably a lot of things that you can do in fig tree that I don't even know how to do, but I just wanted to cover at least some of the basics uh, if you've never seen this program before. So uh, again, please let me know if you have any suggestions for my pipeline. Um, I'd love to hear if uh, you think I should do anything better. Um, I'm always willing uh, and hoping to learn how to improve. So. Hopefully this was helpful to some of you and uh, thank you so much for watching.